I still have eyeballs. That's disgusting. Beverly's reaction in the trailer leads some to believe that maybe something's up with her tea in this scene. Oh, hell no. Okay, what's this? I used to live here. That's a scary movie. Ah, hell yeah, baby! Yes? I help you. I used to live here. Is this the new It trailer? It's It. This is the new It trailer. It's the least I can do. I haven't seen the trailer for the new one, but I have seen the the first one that came out. Well, you feel free to look around while I get the water boiling. Your hair is winter fire. January embers. It's like all of them a lot older. That's Beverly? It's not them when they're older? Oh, no, 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 no. Ooh. There you go. That was weird. There you go. Thank you. Now some music. Okay, this old lady is giving me creepy vibes. I do apologize. It gets so very hot here this time of year. It's fine. Well, you feel like you could just about die. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But you know what they say about dairy? Hmm. No one who dies here ever really dies. Okay, you gotta stop talking about death. That's a, uh, there's some foreshadowing here. No one who dies here ever really dies. That's disconcerting. She's probably it, like, not gonna lie. Oh my gosh, that's so creepy. But tell me, how is it being back in Derry? It's good. Strange. Strange? Oh, my. <gasps> oh, my. Oh, my God. What? <coughs> I had some cookies in the oven before you came. Stay right there. I shouldn't impose. I'm going to. Uh, time to dip. At this point, it's time to GTFO. Your photos are lovely, Miss Kirsch. Are these your family? My father came to this country with $14 in his pocket. What did he do, Mrs. Kirsch? My father joined the circus. Uh, Pennywise. It's Pennywise, yes. I love that this isn't like a trailer, it's like an actual clip from the movie, which is scarier, honestly. Oh, that kind of scared me. <laughs> oh my god, is she naked? <gasps> Put some clothes on, girl. Shining had a naked grandma. This has a naked grandma. <laughs> What's with horror movies and naked grandmas? Are you still his little girl, Beverly? Oh my god, I can't even. Are you? I don't like the sound of this. What the heck? Ooh, girl, run. It's me and the Losers Club has officially begun. No way. Oh my God, it's all of them in the future. Bill Hader, hell yeah. Hell no. Ooh, ooh, I saw some eyeballs. That's disgusting. Oh my god, I, can't, I really can't look at stuff like that. Hello. <laughs> Alright, I'm seeing the first one today, right when I get home. I'm excited. The first one was really scary. I saw it in theaters when it first came out and I was like, yeah. I was front row, so everything was like popping out of me and I was like, nope, can't do this. God, this is gonna be great. This is gonna be a great movie. I can already tell. I liked the first one. I just kind of thought it was okay. But this is actually like, oh, this, this is getting the blood pumping. So we have more to show you in a second. But that was the new teaser trailer for It Chapter 2 that was released recently. The new film is set in 2016 and it follows the kids from the first film 27 years later now as adults. Right. Okay. Interesting. So for many fans, the biggest thing to do is comb through the trailer, find as many hints about the story as possible. Right. So we're going to play the trailer again and pause during a few of the most talked about moments from the trailer to see what your thoughts are. But remember, Ooh. all speculation. Yeah. I'm so excited for this. Trailer speculation, an art form. <laughs> well, you feel free to look around while I get the water boiling. Your hair is winter fire. January embers. My heart burns 
She's in sha she was in shackles or something. Oh. Uh, does this have to do with abuse or something? Well, wasn't her dad abusive? But didn't he die in the first one? Maybe, like, bruises stuck around since she was a kid. Like, from, from her dad, how they never really went away. So, fans seem to think that this image confirms that Beverly's storyline from the book will also appear in the film. In the book, Beverly is a victim of domestic violence, and these are her bruised arms. Oh. I feel like that's exciting for fans who, who follow the book. There's so much attention to detail. Obviously, they didn't do that by accident. I'm just surprised people look that in detail to, like, notice that, because I did not see that at all. I feel like she's just been so vulnerable her whole life that she can't find the right person. And when she's with a person that abuses her, she feels like she has to stay because she's had that past as well. That's freaky to me, I those do. flies. It gets so very hot here this time of year. It's fine. But you feel like you could just about die. <laughs> so she makes a little bit of a face after drinking that tea. Oh, yeah. What do you think that could mean? I don't know, the old lady put something in it? She's dead. I just, yeah, yeah, I think that's it's pretty clear. Like, she's dead. You see the flies out there. Flies decompose things. In the book, the teacup scene here is actually full of excrements, appropriate given that Pennywise lives in the town's sewage system. No, no. Oh my god, that could be the reason for the flies. Beverly's reaction in the trailer leads some to believe that maybe something's up with her tea in this scene. Oh hell no! Oh, just just seeing her like as she as she's getting like the cookie, she looks down to see what it is. That ugh. I would just be like, okay, and then just run the heck away. <laughs> I'm like, no. Well, that is the tea, am I right? <laughs> Tell me, how is it being back in Derry? She's so sweaty. She anxious Great. about something? Oh my. And then y'all had to stop it and zero in on it. Not really sure what it is, but it looks like her skin is deteriorating and it looks disgusting. Well, there are wounds. Wounds that Pennywise had on him when, they, uh, when he was attacked. Many fans think that the mark on the old woman's chest confirms that she is in fact Pennywise. Oh, oh, breaking gender roles, okay. So in the first film, Mike stabs Pennywise with a fence post right in the chest that almost killed him. That's interesting. So maybe it's like being Pennywise passes down through the family or something. I can see that. Plus she's weird. Like at the end of the trailer, she had those like weird legs and she was running towards her. That's like a Pennywise move. I kind of like thought that she was Pennywise, but uh, I, I thought he lived in the sewer. <laughs> The Lumberjack. Paul Bunyan. Was that important, I guess, back 20-something years ago in the first one? You're gonna have to help me out here. <laughs> so, in the novel that the movie is adapted from, Richie, who's played by Bill Hader in the second film, comes face to face with Pennywise the Clown, and Pennywise transforms into this statue and attacks Richie. So the image in the trailer may confirm that this could happen in the film. Oh my gosh, that's so scary. That's like their biggest fear is following them into adulthood. It seems like they're taking a lot more details from the book now and really using that in this movie, which is really cool. It's really cool that they're like staying pretty faithful to the actual book because a lot of movie adaptations don't do that. And so it's also nice because then you leave hints like this and then people who've read the book will be like, oh my God, like they'll feel special for ever, like having actually read it. This second film sees the kids now as adults. Mm -hmm. So we now have an image that's a side-by-side -side comparison of the kid actors with their adult counterparts. We want to see what you think of how they did with the casting. Wow. That is pretty on point. Oh my gosh. It's pretty spot on. Like that could definitely be all of them Grown up. They did a good job with Beverly. Fiddle part, I don't I don't really know to be honest. But but I could see I could see the resemblance. <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't be excited for Bill Hader? That's gonna be great. That's the guy from Split. He is a really good actor. He's so talented in bringing like raw emotion and being like really vulnerable in front of the camera. So I think that's good that they cast him as like lead because there's so much like emotional trauma in him. <laughs> All right, that happens. People lose weight, I guess. Maybe in the first one he realized that when you gotta run, 
You gotta get in shape. They got a lot of star power in it. And star power may not always translate into actually being a good movie, but these are definitely reliable people who hopefully will uh, do justice to the second part of it. So there has been a lot of anticipation for this movie thanks to how the first film in the series ended and how well it did with both critics and audiences. Well, it deserves it because it's a great movie. So you're obviously a teen and some of you guys here aren't even able to see an R-rated film without a parent. But we do it anyway. <laughs> but we wanted to ask, have you seen the first It movie? And if so, what were your opinions on that? I have not seen it, but I feel like I have seen it just because the hype around it was so huge. No, I have not. <laughs> well, my parents like, no, rated our movies. You can't do that. I loved it. I saw it with a bunch of friends and it was a great movie. I saw it, I believe it was when I was 18, so I could see it. And yeah, it was pretty terrifying and there were a lot of curse words in there, especially from the little kids, like you wouldn't expect that. But. Yeah, so it makes sense that it's rated R. I actually liked the movie a lot. The acting was good, the story was pretty good. I just, I don't know how the book is compared to the movie, and that's why I want to read it, because most of the time the book is a lot better. When I saw the first one, I remember like, I was in the movie theater with my family, and they were like super into it, and there were like some jump scares with the clown, but I was so sad the whole movie because I was like, this little boy, it's just dead now, and I thought the whole movie, I was saying, I was like, he's gonna come back to life, like they're gonna save him. But then at the end, he died, and I was like, what was the point of that? So Stephen King, who is the author of It, along with many other classic thrillers, has been known to dislike the movie adaptations of his books. For example, he hated the Shining movie. That I heard was directed, that. <laughs> yeah, that was directed by Stanley Kubrick, calling it a big, beautiful Cadillac with no engine inside of it, saying that the characters had no real story arc in the film. Yeah, I think uh, it's interesting because there's a certain element of like how much of adapting a book is portraying the author's vision and how much is actually like adapting it to make it more suitable for a film medium. You can't really deny that Stanley Kubrick's The Shining is like a cinematic masterpiece. But on May 7th, he tweeted out about the sequel of this film stating, I've seen it and it's terrific. So as a teen, do you care more about what the author of the source material or critics might think or would you care more about what your friends think when it comes to a movie? Definitely my friends. If I read a review saying that the movie is terrible, but then I have like five of my friends saying, oh my God, it was so good, I'm gonna see the movie. Friends, like they got their weird opinions. Critics, that's their job. So they're a little smarter in that area. So I would go with the, what the critics say. If the author thinks it's good, then it's good because when the author is writing something, they have a vision in their head of how it's supposed to be. And if his vision sort of matches up with what the movie is, then that's amazing. Some of my friends have pretty crappy taste in movies. <laughs> so the fact that like the original author appreciates it and thinks that it like shows his material in the right way and it's well done, I think that shows that it's gonna be really good. If I haven't necessarily read the book, I kind of care a little bit more what my friends think because I have more trust in them at that point, you know? Because I know that we typically like the same thing, so if they liked it, I'm gonna like it, whereas I might not know if I like the book or the author. So finally, will you float to the theater and watch It Chapter Two or will you be floating in the opposite direction? I'm I'm gonna float to the theaters. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna float on in and watch it. I'll see, I'll probably, I might watch it with some friends or something. Probably the opposite direction. <laughs> Just cause I haven't seen the first one. I'm not sure it would be best for my mental health to see the first one. I will go see the movie. It's gonna be a great time and I can't wait to see it. Uh, oh, I can't wait. I'm gonna be floating there and hopefully I don't float back and Pennywise doesn't come after me. I definitely wanna watch it and it chapter two. But I don't know if I want to watch it in theaters because, like, <laughs> when you watch a movie in theaters, you can't pause it. Oh, no, I'm floating into the theater with the balloons and everything. I'm going in there. <laughs> this happens a lot when it's, like, rated R movies. People talk about it. I can't see it. I'm left out the conversation. I hate that. I want to be in the conversation. And also, because it's a good movie, someone from what I've heard, I want to see it. Thanks for watching this episode of Teens React. Shout out to Brie Taylor and Nice Stuff. Hi everyone, it's Reyna. I can't believe I am moving on to Adults React. I'm no longer a teen, which is so weird. But wow, Teens React really helped me get out of my comfort zone and see all of you wonderful fans out there who support us. All right, bye guys.